What was the Carolingian Empire? The Empire, which united most of Western Europe under a single leader from about 734 until 987, was named for the Carolingians, a family of Frankish kings. After the decline of the Roman Empire, in 476, various Germanic tribes, including the Goths, the Vandals, the Franks, and the Anglo-Saxons dominated Western Europe fighting each other as well as the advancing Muslims to protect and expand their territories. In 719 Charles Martel c. 688-741, united the lands of all the Franks under his rule. The Franks were the descendants of Germanic tribes who settled in the Rhine River region of Western Europe. He then went on to protect France from Arab incursion and campaigned against the Burgundians and the Frisians, eventually bringing them under his control. Upon his death in 741, Charles Martel was succeeded by his son, Pepin III. Known better perhaps as Pepin the Short, c. 714-768. It was Pepin who established the Carolingian Empire and brought the Lombards into the empire. Upon his death, he was succeeded by his son Charlemagne, or Charles the Great, 742 to 814. Who was Baiko? Stephen Baiko, 1946 to 1977 was a black leader in the fight against South African apartheid and white minority rule. In 1969 Baiko, who was then a medical student, founded the South African Students' Organization, which took an active role in the black consciousness movement, a powerful force in the fight against apartheid. Preaching a doctrine of black self-reliance and self-respect. Baiko organized protests, including anti-government strikes and marches. Viewing such activities as a challenge to its authority and fearing an escalation of unrest. In August 1977, the white government had Baiko arrested. Within one month, he died in prison. Evidence indicated he had died at the hands of his jailers. A revelation that only cemented anti government sentiment. Along with Nelson Mandela, 1918, who was imprisoned in South Africa from 1962 to 1990 for his political activities, Baiko became a symbol of the anti apartheid movement. Galvanizing support for racial justice at home and abroad. What was the My Lai Massacre? It was a horrific chapter in American military history, during which you as troops fighting in South Vietnam took the small village of My Lai on March 16, 1968. The Incident did not come to light until more than a year later, after which time it became clear that the 
Unit of 105 soldiers who entered my lie that morning had faced no opposition from the villagers. Even so, at the end of the day as many as 500 civilians, including women and children, lay dead. Though charges were brought against some of the men, only the commander of the company. Lieutenant William Calley, was convicted. His sentence of life imprisonment for the murder of at least 22 people was later reduced to 20 years, and he was released on full parole in November 1974. Why was the Battle of Midway important in World War II? It was the turning point for the Allied forces fighting the Japanese in the Pacific. The battle for Midway Island, actually two small islands situated about 1,300 miles west-northwest of Honolulu. Hawaii, began on June 4, 1942. The Japanese aimed to control Midway as a position from which its air force could launch further attacks on Hawaii. As the Japanese fleet approached the islands, which was home to a U.S. Navy base, established in 1941, U.S. forces attacked. Fighting continued until June 6. The Japanese were decisively defeated, losing four aircraft carriers, the United States lost one. The victory proved that Allied naval might could overcome Japan's. How old are Aesop's fables? They date back to the 6th century B. See however, it was not until the late 1600s that English language versions appeared. In 1692 a complete translation of the stories, which are believed to have been written by a Greek slave, were published in London by Sir Roger Ella Strange, 1616-1704. The short, moralistic tales, which were handed down through the oral tradition, include the well-known story of the tortoise and the hare, which teaches the lesson slow and steady wins the race, and the one about a wolf in sheep's clothing, people are not always what they seem. Since some of the timeless fables have been traced to earlier literature, Many believe it is almost certain that Aesop is a legendary figure. How has MTV affected the music industry? MTV's almost immediate impact was to launch the music careers of fledgling artists. Some critics believe that superstar Madonna, who showed up on the music scene at about the same time as MTV, would not have risen to the heights of fame that she has were it not for music television. Or at least her star might not have risen so quickly but she and other media-savvy artists exploited the new format to reach the music-buying public the world over, for soon MTV had a global presence. The video channel also gave established artists a boost by airing more than one single off a given album resulting in several hits from any one recording. Such was the case for artists like Billy Joel, Bruce Springsteen, U2, 
and Peter Gabriel. Increasingly creative videos gave the works of album-oriented musicians longer lives and steady sales. MTV quickly established itself and the format as an integral part of the music industry. Once the format was proven viable, other music television channels emerged including VH1, which was begun by media mogul Ted Turner and was later bought by MTV and molded into an adult-oriented music station. The Nashville Network, TNN which aired country music videos and programming in the 1980s and 1990s, and country music television, CMT. Today, the music video remains an important tool for new and established artists alike. Media analysts also believe MTV has had an impact on modern culture. Since the channel relies on interesting visuals to capture viewing audiences. MTV is constantly upping the creative ante for artists who freely experiment with bright colors. Images, rapid-fire editing, motifs, dreamlike imagery, and other visual techniques. Which began showing up on other television shows, in movies, and in advertising. Some observers believe the phenom has ushered in a new visual order. Of course, MTV has its detractors, critics argue that the MTV aesthetic is superficial, and that it is accelerating the movement away from traditional forms of literacy. While MTV is praised and panned in the worldwide media, there's no arguing that the music channel continues to be a window on what's hip and hot to the American youth. What was Lend Lease? Lend Lease was a plan developed and strongly supported by President Franklin D. Roosevelt, 1882-1945, to extend material assistance to the Allied powers fighting the Axis powers in World War II. 1939-45, in the days preceding U.S. involvement in the war. Roosevelt argued that it was imperative for the country to come to the aid of those fighting Germany and Italy it was similar to helping your neighbor put out a fire in his house in order to prevent your own house from catching fire and burning. Under Lend-Lease, which was passed by Congress on March 11, 1941, approximately. $50 billion of aid in the form of food and supplies, weapons, machinery, and other equipment was provided to the Allied nations primarily to Britain and the Commonwealth nations first, but later to all nations fighting against Hitler's war machine. The return of the goods was not addressed until after the war had ended. At that time, most people felt the Allies had all contributed everything they had to the war effort. And that the sacrifices made by Allied Europe in the days prior to U.S. Entry into the fighting were balanced by the contributions made under the Lend-Lease Act. What does Messiah mean? Messiah is the Hebrew word for anointed one. In the broadest sense, a Messiah is the professed or accepted leader of some hope or cause. Jesus is believed by Christians to be the Messiah whose 
arrival was foretold by the Hebrew prophets in the Old Testament. For example, in Isaiah 9 6, it states that a child will be born among the people. A son is given to us, he will bear the symbol of dominion, and his title will be Wonderful Counselor. Mighty Hero, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Who were the Angles? The Angles were yet another Germanic tribe, they originated in Schleswig in northwestern Germany. Like other Germanic peoples, they were on the move by the 5th century. Arriving in England, the Angles joined the Saxons, also a Germanic-speaking people. After which time they together became known as Anglo-Saxons, a term referring to any non-Celtic settler of Britain. Wade controversial? The 1973 Supreme Court decision in the case of Roe v. Wade legalized abortion in the United States and has probably engendered more public controversy than any other legal decision of the late 20th century. Women's access to safe abortion continues to be the subject of debate. At issue in legal cases, and has inspired overzealous anti-abortion activists to violence. Against doctors who perform abortions and office workers in women's health clinics. The seven Supreme Court justices who issued the majority decision became the recipients of thousands of letters of hatred, some of them threatening. The case was brought as a class action suit, representing all pregnant women. By 21-year-old Norma McCorvey, 1947. Who has since the ruling reversed her feeling and joined the anti-abortion camp as a right-to-life advocate. But in 1969, under the alias Jane Roe, McCorvey claimed that Texas's abortion law on the books since 1859, violated her constitutional rights and those of other women. The other party named in the case was Texas District Attorney Henry B. Wade, 1914-2001, who argued to uphold Texas state law that punished anyone who gave an abortion. Despite the fact that the ruling in the case would do nothing to help McCorvey. For whom even a favorable decision would come too late to end her unwanted pregnancy, her lawyers, Linda Coffey and Sarah Weddington, agreed to pursue the case as a test. The crux of the plaintiff's case is best summed up by arguments made before the Supreme Court, when in December 1971, Weddington argued that Texas's ability to compel women to bear children infringed on a woman's right to control her own life. It was therefore a violation of the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, which forbids states to make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens. In response to defense claims that the fetus is entitled to protection, Weddington averred. The Constitution as I read it, attaches protection to the person at the time of birth. These arguments, and those of the defense, were presented twice to the Supreme Court. 
After the first presentation the seven justices then seated concluded that such an important decision should not be made until the two newly appointed justices could participate. In October 1972 the case was heard again. As it turned out, the two new judges represented one majority vote and one dissenting vote. The majority decision was read by Justice Harry Blackman on January 22, 1973. The High Court overturned all state laws restricting women's access to abortions. The decision was based on the court's opinion that existing laws banning abortions had been enacted to protect the health of American women, since abortion had previously been a risky medical procedure. And that with advances in medicine this protection was no longer necessary or valid. The court also agreed that the Constitution's implied right to privacy. As found in the 14th Amendment's concept of personal liberty, or in the Ninth Amendment's reservation of rights to the people is broad enough to encompass a woman's decision to terminate her pregnancy. Two justices dissented in the opinion, with Justice Byron White writing that the court had sustained a position that values the convenience whim or caprice of the putative mother more than life or the potential life of the fetus. Nearly three decades after the landmark decision, opinion continues to divide along such lines. What were the effects of the Dust Bowl? After the dust had settled in the spring of 1934, the reaction among many great Plains Farm families was to flee the devastation. More than 350,000 people packed up their belongings and headed west, their lives forever changed by the disaster. In his 1939 novel, the Grapes of Wrath, American writer and Nobel laureate John Steinbeck. 1902-1968, chronicled the harrowing and sorrowful westward journey of one Oklahoma family that was among the so-called Okies who deserted their farmlands. In the devastated area of the Great Plains in search of a better life elsewhere, Nature alone was not to blame for the Dust Bowl, by the end of the 19th century, farmers. Aided by the advent of large tractors and reapers, harvesting machines, were cultivating the Great Plains. Uprooting the native buffalo grass, which holds moisture in the soil, keeping it from blowing away. Even strong winds and extended droughts had not disturbed the land when it was covered by the grassland. When the demand for wheat increased after World War I, 1914-18, farmers responded by planting more than 27 million new acres of the grain. By 1930 there were almost three times as many acres in wheat production as ten years earlier. Most of the buffalo grass that had prevented the earth from blowing had been removed. When the next dry period came, in spring 1934, and the wind picked up, the Dust Bowl resulted. The government stepped in to remedy the problem, soil conservation became the focus of federal agencies. And the U.S. Forest Service undertook a project to plant a Shelter belt of trees within a 100-mile wide zone, from Canada to the Texas Panhandle. Recovery was aided by the return of the rains. 
Soon the buffalo grass had grown back, helping to ensure that the dust bowl would not recur. Are the Bushes the first father-son presidents? No, the nation's 41st, George H. W. Bush, and 43rd, George W. Bush, presidents were preceded as father-son presidents by John Adams. 1735-1826, the second president of the United States, and John Quincy Adams, 1767-1848, the sixth. There have been other presidents whose relatives held the office before them, Benjamin Harrison. The 23rd president, was the grandson of the nation's ninth, William Henry Harrison. Zachary Taylor, the 12th president, and James Madison, the 4th, were second cousins. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was preceded in the office by his distant cousin, Teddy Roosevelt. Genealogists determined that FDR had ties to 10 other presidents as well. Four of them were blood relatives and six were relatives by marriage. John Adams, John Quincy Adams, Ulysses S. Grant, William Henry Harrison, Benjamin Harrison, James Madison. William Howard Taft, Zachary Taylor, Martin Van Buren, and George Washington. When did modern medicine begin? The practices of modern medicine have their roots in the 1600s. It was early in the century when the work of English physician William Harvey, 1578-1657, demonstrated to the science community that effective medicine depends on knowledge of the body's structure. From 1597 to 1602 Harvey studied medicine at Padua, Italy, under Italian surgeon Fabricius, or Fabrici, 1537 to 1619, and went on to perform numerous experiments to learn how blood circulates through the body. In his studies, Harvey discarded the accepted method of studying parts of a problem and then filling in the gaps with theory, instead he aimed to understand the entire circulatory system. Studying the pulse and heartbeat, and performing dissections on cadavers. He accurately concluded that the heart pumps blood through the arteries to all parts of the body and that the blood returns through the veins to the heart. Putting his discovery into writing, Harvey published an anatomical study of the motion of the heart and of the blood in animals in 1628. Another medical development during the 1600s came not at the hands of a physician or surgeon, but rather a naturalist, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, 1632-1723 A surveyor to the court of Holland, van Leeuwenhoek began making his own microscopes and used them to study organisms invisible to the naked eye he had discovered. Microorganisms Leeuwenhoek also observed, but did not name, bacteria and he accurately described red blood corpus cles, striated muscle fibers, and the lens of the eye. This amateur scientist also disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. 
the belief that living organisms could be generated by lifeless matter. Who was the first man to walk on the moon? It was American astronaut Neil Armstrong, 1930, who, on July 20, 1969, stepped out of the lunar module from Apollo 11 and walked on the moon. Armstrong, who was joined by astronaut Edwin Buzz Aldrin Jr., 1930, uttered the famous words, That's one small step for a man. One giant leap for mankind. The live voice transmission had dropped the A before man, but it was added in later. What is NAFTA? NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement, signed on December 17, 1992, by you. S. President George H. W. Bush, 1924, Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, 1939, and Mexican President Carlos Salinas de Gortari, 1948. It went into effect January 1, 1994. Inspired by the success of the European Community's Open Trade Agreement. The architects of NAFTA aimed to create free trade among North America's three largest countries. A 1988 pact between the United States and Canada had already lifted numerous barriers to trade between the two nations. That agreement was expanded to include Mexico through a series of negotiations that were preliminarily approved in August 1992 and were concluded with the signing of NAFTA later that year. The agreement removes trade barriers, including customs duties and tariffs, over the course of 15 years. Allowing commodities and manufactured goods to be freely traded among the three nations. NAFTA also includes provisions that allow American and Canadian service companies to expand their markets into Mexico. Have all nations of the world granted women the right to vote? No, in a few nations women remain disenfranchised. By the 1990s women had a legal right to vote everywhere in the world except in six Middle Eastern countries. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, Oman, Qatar, and United Arab Emirates, as well as in Brunei, a small oil-rich country in Southeast Asia. In 2001 Bahrain extended equal voting rights to women, and in 2003 Qatar did the same. But a traditional interpretation of Islamic law kept Muslim. Women from voting in a few conservative Persian Gulf states. Kuwaiti lawmakers proposed limited women's suffrage in spring 2005, but the measure was not approved. There was mounting pressure, from inside and outside the Muslim world, for this to change. The issue was an important focal point for the Human Rights Watch, an international watchdog group. In October 2004 a high-ranking Egyptian cleric spoke out on the contentious issue, saying 
it is the right of a Muslim woman to vote for and speak her opinion about whoever serves public or greater interests. He went on to clarify that he was talking about Muslim women in all Muslim countries. In Egypt, Kuwait, and others. Suffrage for women has been one country by country and decade by decade. Further, within many countries, rights have been extended only gradually. For example, beginning with local elections. The first nations to extend broad voting rights to women were New Zealand in 1893, Australia, and South Wales in 1902, and Finland in 1906. In the 1910s women in several European and Scandinavian nations, including Austria, Denmark, Germany, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway. Poland, and Russia, won the right to vote largely as a result of World War I, 1914-18. The 1920s added not only the United States and the United Kingdom, to a voting status equal to men, but about a dozen other nations, including the former Czechoslovakia and Sweden. Every decade since added more nations to the tally. So that as of 2004 only a few nations denied women the right to vote. Was Mata Hari really a spy? When Dutch-born Margaretha Zell MacLeod, 1876 to 1917 was arrested in Paris on February 13, 1917. There was scant hard evidence that this woman, known throughout Europe as Mata Hari, was actually a spy for the Germans during World War I, 1914-18, but there was plenty of evidence that she had long consorted with the enemy and had been paid by them, but for exactly what was never discovered. Nevertheless, the testimony heard by the jury over two days in July in a closed Parisian courtroom was enough to convince them that this former exotic dancer, who could count as her lovers a who's who of European men, was, in fact, a spy. She was sentenced to death. At age 18, the result of a matrimonial advertisement. She married a middle-aged colonial captain in the Dutch Army, John Rudolph Campbell MacLeod. He was posted to duty on the island of Java, where his young and beautiful wife, now 21 years old, learned not only the Malay language, but native dances as well. Her Javanese friends named her Mata Hari, meaning the Eye of the Dawn. Upon returning to Holland, Mata Hari secured a separation from her husband and moved to Paris where she enjoyed a life of excess and soon became known as an exotic Hindu dancer. She performed throughout Europe, all the while engaging in liaisons with powerful and wealthy men. In 1914 she moved to Germany, where she is believed to have been trained as a spy in Antwerp. With World War I on, Mata Hari returned to Paris. She was permitted to enter France since she owned property there and was a citizen of neutral Holland. She renewed her ties with men of influence and in that capacity collected information for the Germans. The Allied nations kept a close eye on her, and, suspecting her of espionage, set a trap for her. She became a double agent. The French sent her to Spain to work. 
but there she reportedly met regularly with German intelligence agents. When the Germans ordered her back to Paris, Allied officials having intercepted a German cable for her awaited her return. They arrested Matahari, who was found in possession of a check from the Germans. At her trial, a report compiled by the French and holding Matahari responsible for the deaths of some 50,000 Allied soldiers, was brought into evidence. She was killed by firing squad on October 15, 1917, the war still more than a year from ending. When did the Industrial Revolution begin? The Industrial Revolution began in Great Britain during the 1700s. And by the early 1800s it had spread to Western Europe and the United States. It was brought about by the introduction of steam power driven machinery to manufacturing. By the close of the 1800s most finished goods, which had once been made by hand or by simple machines, were produced in quantity by technologically advanced machinery. How old is the oldest clock? He first mechanical timekeeping device was a water clock called a clepsydra. Which was used from about 1500 B. C through the Middle Ages, 500-1350. One very elaborate clepsydra was constructed for Holy Roman Emperor Charlemagne, 742 to 814, in a d 800. Upon the hour, it dropped a metal ball into a bowl. Because of problems with water, it evaporated, froze, and eroded the surfaces of its container. A more accurate device was needed. It is believed that the first completely mechanical clock was developed by a monk around 1275. The clock was driven by the slow pull of a falling weight that had to be reset to its starting position after several hours. The clocks in monasteries were among the first to be fitted as alarm clocks. Striking mechanisms were added to the timekeeping devices so the monks would know when to ring the monastery bell. Other calendars remain in use in the world today, including the Lunar Babylonian, Chinese, and Muslim calendars, the Jewish calendar, which is a combination of solar and lunar and the solar Coptic, Japanese, and Hindu calendars. Secular calendars include the Julian day, used by astronomers, and the perpetual calendar, which gives the days of the week for the Julian and the Gregorian calendar, and therefore is used by historians and other scholars to reconcile world events along a single timeline. What caused the Mexican War? The Two-Year War, 1846-48, was fought over the United States' annexation of Texas. The events that led up to the conflict began in 1837 when President Andrew Jackson 
1767-1845, recognized Texas as independent, this was just after Texas had won its war with Mexico. Republic of Texas President Sam Houston, 1793-1863, felt that protection against a Mexican invasion may be necessary, so he eyed annexation to the United States. In the meantime, Mexican President Antonio López de Santa Anna, 1794-1876 warned that such an action on the part of the United States would be equivalent to a declaration of war against the Mexican Republic. In June 1844 the U.S. Senate rejected a proposed annexation treaty. But later that year Democratic Party nominee James K. Polk, 1795-1849, an ardent expansionist, was elected president. Because the annexation of Texas had figured prominently in his campaign platform, Outgoing President John Tyler, 1790-1862, viewed Polk's victory as a public mandate for annexation. And he recommended that Congress pass a joint resolution to invite Texas into the Union. Congress did so in February, and President Tyler signed the resolution on March 1, 1845. Three days before leaving office, Mexico responded by breaking off diplomatic relations with the United States. A border dispute made the situation increasingly tenuous. Texas claimed that its southern border was the Rio Grande River, while Mexico insisted it was the Nueces River, situated farther north. In June President Polk ordered Brigadier General Zachary Taylor, 1784-1850, to move his forces into the disputed area. In November the U.S. government received word that Mexico was prepared to talk. Polk dispatched Congressman John Slidell, 1793-1871, to Mexico to discuss three other outstanding issues. The purchase of California, for $25 million, the purchase of New Mexico, for $5 million. And the payment of damages to American nationals for losses incurred in Mexican revolutions. This last point was critical to the negotiations. As Polk was prepared to have the United States assume payment of damages to its own citizens in exchange. For Mexico's recognition of the Rio Grande as the southern border of Texas. But upon arrival in Mexico City, Slidell was refused the meeting President Jose Joaquim Herrera. 1792 to 1854, had bowed to pressure, opposing discussions with the United States. When Polk received news of the scuttled talks, he authorized General Taylor to advance through the disputed territory to the Rio Grande. Meanwhile, Mexico overthrew President Herrera. Putting into office the fervent nationalist General Mariano Paredes y Arrilaga, 1797-1849, who reaffirmed Mexico's claim to Texas and pledged to defend Mexican territory. While Polk worked through Slidell to get an audience with the Mexican government, the attempts failed. And on May 9 the cabinet met and approved the president's recommendation to ask Congress to declare war. The next day news arrived in Washington that on April 25 a sizable Mexican force had crossed the Rio Grande and surrounded a smaller American reconnaissance party. 
11 Americans were killed and the rest were wounded or captured. On May 11 Polk delivered a message to Congress, concluding, Mexico has shed American blood upon the American soil, war exists, by the act of Mexico herself. By the time the war was officially declared. On May 13, just more than one year after Polk had been sworn into office. General Taylor had already fought and won key battles against the Mexicans and had occupied the northern Mexico city of Matamoros. How did World War I begin? Though the Great War, as it was called until World War II, 1939 to 45, was sparked by the June 28, 1914, assassination of Archduke Francis Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary. 1863 to 1914, the war in Europe had been precipitated by several developments. National pride had been growing among Europeans, nations increased their armed forces through drafts. And colonialism continued to be a focus of the European powers. As they competed with each other for control of lands in far-off places. Meantime, weapons and other implements of war had been improved by industry. Making them deadlier than ever. So on that June day in the city of Sarajevo, then the capital of Austria-Hungary's province of Bosnia and Herzegovina. When a gunman named Gavrilo Princip. 1894-1918 shot down Archduke Ferdinand, it is not surprising that Austria-Hungary responded with force. Since Princip was known to have ties to a Serbian terrorist organization. Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Both sides, however, believed that the battle would be decided quickly. But instead fighting would spread involving more countries. Four years of fighting aided by the airplane, the submarine, tanks, and machine guns would cause greater destruction than any other war to that date. Why was the fire at the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory important to the labor movement? The March 25, 1911, blaze, which killed 146 people, most of them women, prompted public outrage and led to the immediate passage of fire safety legislation and became a rallying cry for labor reforms. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory occupied the top three floors of a Manhattan office building. It was one of the most successful garment factories in New York City. Employing some 1,000 workers, mostly immigrant women. But the conditions were hazardous, the space was cramped, accessible only via stairwells and hallways so narrow that people had to pass single file, only one of the four elevators was regularly in service. The cutting machines in the workroom were gas-powered, scraps of fabric littered the work areas, the water barrels. For use in case of fire, were not kept full, and the no smoking rule was not strictly enforced. In short, it was an accident waiting to happen. When the fire broke out on a weekend, 
the cause is unknown since the building was charred so badly. About half of the employees were there. Smoke and fire, however, were not the only causes of death, in the panicked escape. People were trampled, fell in elevator shafts, jumped several stories to the pavement below. And were killed when a fire escape melted and collapsed. While the fire happened during a time of labor reform. Those reforms had not come soon enough to save the lives of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory employees. Who had been subjected to extremely poor and dangerous working conditions. The disaster became a rallying cry for the labor movement, tens of thousands of people marched in new. York City in tribute to those who had died, calling attention to the grave social problems of the day. In New York State, the fire safety reforms for factories came right away. The legislature appointed investigative commissions to examine factories statewide. And 30 ordinances in New York City were enacted to enforce fire prevention measures. One of the earliest was the Sullivan Hoey Fire Prevention Law of October 1911, which combined six agencies to form an efficient fire commission. Soon factories were required to install sprinkler systems. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire became an object lesson for the entire nation, prompting the consolidation of reform efforts. The much-needed labor reforms, which addressed the miserable working conditions, did not come until years later. Who coined the term Iron Curtain? It was former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, 1874 to 1965. In a March 1946 speech in Fulton, Missouri, he remarked that an iron curtain has descended across the continent. The statesman, who had been instrumental in coordinating the Allied victory in World War II, 1939 to 45, was commenting on Soviet leader Joseph Stalin's 1879-1953 tactics in Eastern Europe, which indicated the Soviets were putting up barriers against the West and building up Soviet domination behind those barriers. Just as he had issued warnings of the threat posed by Nazi Germany prior to World War II. Churchill astutely observed the rapidly emerging situation in Eastern Europe. In 1946 the Soviets installed communist governments in neighboring Romania and in nearby Bulgaria, in 1947 Hungary and Poland came under communist control as well. And the following year, communists took control of Czechoslovakia. These countries, along with Albania, Yugoslavia, and East Germany. Soon formed a coalition of communist allies and the Eastern Bloc was formed. The United States and its democratic allies formed the Western Bloc. The stage was set for the Cold War, 1947-89. When was Microsoft founded? It wasn't all that long ago, 1975, 
that computer was Bill Gates, 1955. Founded what is now the dominant manufacturer of computer software. So dominant that the company has faced antitrust allegations from the federal government. Gates was only 19 years old when he founded the business with his friend Paul Gardner Allen. And he had dropped out of Harvard to do so. It paid off, Gates was a billionaire by age 30. Though he's undoubtedly a math ace. He scored a perfect 800 in math on his sats and began writing computer programs when he was all of 13. Gates has more than once credited the success of Microsoft to not his own programming skills but to hiring the best programming talent for the Redmond, Washington-based company. What was the arms race? The arms race refers to the build-up of nuclear weapons by the Soviet Union and the United States during the Cold War. The race began on August 29, 1949, when the Soviet Union tested an atomic bomb. Prior to this, only the United States had the knowledge to build the atomic bomb. Who were the Franks? The Franks were another Germanic people who divided into two branches. The Salians, who settled near the lower Rhine River, near the North Sea. And the Repuarians, who moved into what is now Germany, along the Middle Rhine River. In 359 the Franks entered into the Roman Empire as allies, but in 481 Clovis, c. 466 to 511, gained the Sale Ryan Frank kingship. By 486 he had begun a campaign of aggression, conquering Romans, Gauls, Visigoths, and other groups. Under this cruel and cunning king, the Franks soon controlled all of Europe from the Mediterranean to the English Channel, and from the Pyrenees Mountains to the Rhine River. Even after Clovis's death, the Franks maintained their stronghold in the region. Which is how France eventually got its name. Though Clovis was a powerful ruler, he was succeeded as king of the Franks by the even more powerful Charlemagne. Also called Charles the Great, 742 to 814, who ruled from 771 to 814, creating a vast empire. In 800 Pope Leo III. C. 750 to 816, crowned him Emperor of the West, thus initiating the Holy Roman Empire. It was after Charlemagne that the Empire of the Franks began to break up. Becoming the kingdoms of France, Germany, and Italy. How many you? S. Presidents have been assassinated. Four American presidents were assassinated in office. Abraham Lincoln, James Garfield, William McKinley, and John F. Kennedy. Abraham Lincoln, 
1809-1865, was shot on the evening of April 14, 1865, as he sat in the presidential box of Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., watching a performance of Our American Cousin. The man who fired the shot was actor John Wilkes Booth, 1838-1865. Who then jumped onto the stage, fell, breaking a leg, and limped away, calling out. Six Emperor Tyrannies, a Latin phrase meaning thus always to tyrants. The president lived through the night, attended by family. He died just after 7 a.m. On April 15th. He was succeeded in office by Vice President Andrew Johnson, 1808-1875. On April 26 the search party found Booth in a Virginia barn, where he was fatally shot. James Garfield, 1831-1881, was en route to a class reunion at Williams College, Williamstown. Massachusetts on July 2, 1881, when his assailant fired two shots at him in a Washington, D.C. Train station. The shooter was Charles J. Gitto, 1841-1882, who held a grudge against the president. One of Gitto's bullets had only grazed the president. The other was fixed in his back and doctors were unable to locate it. Today the president's life might well have been spared, but the medical treatment of the late 1800s, which lacked both the X-ray machine and antiseptics, could not save him. He lived 80 days more, dying at a cottage on the New Jersey shore on September. 19 He was succeeded in office by Vice President Chester Arthur, 1830-1886. Gitto's trial lawyer would later claim that Garfield's assassin was insane. But it was an unsuccessful plea for his life, in 1882 he was convicted and hung. On September 6, 1901, President William McKinley, 1843 to 1901 was attending a reception in Buffalo, New York, where the previous day he had delivered a speech. As he approached a man to shake his hand, the fellow fired two shots at McKinley. One bullet delivered only a minor flesh wound, but the other lodged in his stomach. Surgeons operated but gangrene and infection set in, claiming the president's life the morning of September 14. He was succeeded in office by Vice President Theodore Roosevelt, 1858-1919. The shooter was identified as avowed anarchist Leon F. Cholgaz, 1873-1901, he was tried, convicted, and put to death in 1901. President John F. Kennedy, 1917-1963, accompanied by his wife, Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy, 1929-1994. Traveled in a motorcade through the streets of Dallas, Texas, on November 22, 1963. They were en route to the Dallas Trade Mart, where the president was scheduled to make a lunchtime speech. At 12.30 p.m., shots rang out. The president, who was riding in the back seat of a convertible, was hit in the neck and head. He was rushed to a nearby hospital, where he died at 1 p.m. The nation's loss was immediately felt. As television and radio stations broadcast the message live that Kennedy had been shot and killed.
he was succeeded by Vice President Lyndon Baines Johnson, 1908-1973, who took the oath of office aboard an airplane just after 2.30 p.m. Additionally there were assassination attempts on the lives of Presidents Andrew Jackson. April 14, 1835, Theodore Roosevelt, October 14, 1912, Franklin D. Roosevelt, February 15, 1933, Harry S. Truman, November 1, 1950, Gerald R. Ford, two attempts, both in September 1975, and Ronald Reagan, March 30, 1981. Theodore Roosevelt and Ronald Reagan recovered from their injuries. The others were not injured in the attempts. What was the nonviolence movement? The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. 1929 to 1968 was committed to bringing about change by staging peaceful protests. He led a campaign of nonviolence as part of the civil rights movement. King rose to prominence as a leader during the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955 when he delivered a speech that embodied his Christian beliefs and set the tone for the nonviolence movement, saying, We are not here advocating violence. The only weapon we have, is the weapon of protest. Throughout his life, King staunchly adhered to these beliefs even after terrorists bombed his family's home. King's arsenal of democratic protest included boycotts, marches. The words of his stirring speeches, comprising an impressive body of oratory, and sightings. With other African American ministers King established the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. 1957, which assumed a leadership role during the civil rights movement. The nonviolent protest of black Americans proved a powerful weapon against segregation and discrimination. A massive demonstration in Birmingham, Alabama. In 1963 helped sway pubic opinion and motivate lawmakers in Washington to act when news coverage of the event showed peaceful protesters being subdued by policemen using dogs and heavy fire hoses. In response to the outcry over the event in Birmingham, President John F. Kennedy, 1917-1963, proposed civil rights legislation to Congress. The bill was passed in 1964. That same year Martin Luther King Jr. received the Nobel Peace Prize for his nonviolent activism. King's policy of peace was challenged two years later when the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee SNCC, tired of the violent response with which peaceful protesters were often met, urged activists to adopt a more decisive and aggressive stance and began promoting the slogan Black Power. The civil rights movement, having made critical strides, became fragmented as leaders, including the highly influential Malcolm X, 1925-1965, differed over how to effect change. On April 4, 1968, King was in Memphis, Tennessee, to show his support for a strike of black sanitation workers when he was gunned down outside his hotel room shortly after 5.30 in the evening. 
As news of King's death swept over the nation, blacks in 168 American cities and towns responded with rioting. Setting fire to buildings, and looting white businesses. Commenting on the terror, radical African American leader Stokely Carmichael said. When white America killed Dr. King last night, she declared war on us. The chaos continued for a week, when the rioting ended on April 11th, there were 46 dead. Most of them black, 35,000 injured and 20,000 jailed. Nevertheless, the violent crime that claimed the leader's life and the violence that erupted after news spread of his death have not, decades later, overshadowed King's legacy of peace and his message of the brotherhood of all people. What were the navigation acts? Between 1645 and 1761 British Parliament passed a series of 29 laws intended to tightly control colonial trade, shipping, and industry to the benefit of English interests in America. These acts, which were largely ignored by the American colonists, were intended to ensure that the British colonies in North America remain subservient to the mother country. The initial act of 1645 forbade the import of whale oil into England. Unless it was transported aboard English ships with English crews. Subsequent laws, those passed in 1651, 1660, and 1663, provided the basis of the Navigation Acts. The first Navigation Act, 1651, resembled the legislation of 1645, but was more far-reaching. It stipulated that goods could only enter England, Ireland, or the colonies aboard English, or English colonial, ships. Further, colonial coastal trade was to be conducted entirely aboard English ships. The Second Navigation Act, 1660, reaffirmed that goods could only be transported aboard English ships and established a list of enumerated articles that had to be shipped directly to England. The intent was to prevent the colonies from trading directly with any other European country. England required the colonies to sell their materials to English merchants or pay duties on goods sold to other countries. The list of articles included sugar, cotton, tobacco, indigo, rice, molasses, apples, and wool. In 1663 Parliament passed the Staple Act, making it illegal for colonies to buy products directly from foreign countries. European countries would first need to ship their products to England or pay customs fees. Through the Navigation Acts England tried to establish itself as the gatekeeper of colonial imports and exports. But the laws were difficult to enforce, and the colonists easily circumvented them. Smuggling was rampant. Still, the laws, which continued to be passed until the eve of the American Revolution, 1775-83, had little effect on the colonial economy, which grew at twice the rate of England's during the period.
When was anesthesia first used? The first use, which was the subject of an embittered debate, was determined to have been in 1842, when Georgia physician Crawford Williamson Long, 1815-1878, became the first doctor to use ether as an anesthetic. He went on to use ether in seven more operations before 1846. When he made a public demonstration of anesthesia. Long published his accounts of the experiences in December 1849. But Boston dentist William T. G. Morton. 1819-1868, disputed Long's claim to have been first in using anesthesia. Morton had begun experimenting with anesthetics at about the same time as Long. And on October 16, 1846, he had arranged the first hospital operation using ether as an anesthetic. A tumor was removed from the neck of a patient at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Nevertheless, it is Long who gets credit for being the first doctor to use ether during an operation. When was the computer chip developed? The computer chip, or integrated circuit, was developed in the late 1950s by two researchers who were working independently of each other, Jack Kilby, 1923, of Texas Instruments, who developed his chip in 1958, and by Robert Noyce, 1927-1990, of Fairchild Semiconductor, in 1959. The chip is an electronic device made of a very small piece. Usually less than one quarter inch square, of silicon wafer, and today has typically hundreds of thousands miniature transistors and other circuit components that are interconnected. Since its development in the late 1950s, the number of tiny components a chip can have has steadily risen. Improving computer performance, since the chips perform a computer's control, logic, and memory functions. A computer's microprocessor is a single chip that holds all of the computer's logic and arithmetic. It is responsible for interpreting and executing instructions given by a computer program, software. The microprocessor can be thought of as the brain of the computer's operating system. Many other consumer electronic devices rely on the computer chip as well. Including the microwave, the VCR, and calculators. How old is chess? It dates to the Middle Ages, in 1283 Alfonso X, 1221 to 1284, King of Castile and Leon, Spain. Commissioned the Libro de Dres, Dados y Tublas, Book of Chess, Dice, and Backgammon, based on an Arabic text. This book is still considered an important source on leisure activities in the Middle Ages. 5001350 What was the Seven Years War
it was a worldwide conflict that began in 1756 between Prussia and Austria. Who fought over control of Germany and over who would be the supreme power in Europe? Great Britain threw its support behind King Frederick II, the Great, 1712-1786, of Prussia. But by the following year Austria was supported not only by France, but also by Sweden, most of the German states, and, very importantly, Russia. Spain joined the fighting on the side of Austria also, but it was not until late in the game after 1762. With such alliances forged among the European states, the conflict soon spilled over. Manifesting itself in the colonies of North America and India, where the French and British fought each other for control. In order to assert his authority in Europe, Prussia's King Frederick had launched many military initiatives and was in a weakened state by the time his army faced the Austrians in 1756. He was spared certain defeat only by an event in Russia in 1762, upon the death of Tsarina Elizabeth Petrovna. 1709-1762, who had feared King Frederick, Peter III, 1728-1762, ascended the Russian throne. Peter, unlike his predecessor, held Frederick in high esteem. And he proceeded to withdraw Russia's support from Austria and reach a peace agreement with Austria's enemy. Prussia he died that same year. The Seven Years' War ended the next year. On February 15, 1763, with the signing of a peace agreement in Saxony, Germany. The area that Austria had fought to control remained, for the most part. Under Prussian rule, positioning Prussia as a leading European power. There were no other territorial changes in Europe as a result of the war. In North America and India, Britain emerged from the conflicts as the victor and as the colonial power. Were there any other airship disasters before Hindenburg? Yes, as Hugo Eckener, 1868 to 1954, and his Zeppelin company laid plans in 1934 to build the large and luxurious Hindenburg. Most other nations with airship programs had either abandoned them or were about to. Since all had experienced disastrous and fatal crashes. One of these was when a British dirigible R-101 burned on October 5, 1930. Northwest of Paris while on her maiden voyage to Australia. That disaster claimed 54 lives. <laughs>